Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius, and this is going to be a fish room tour, and we're not going to do any delaying. We're just going to get right into it. So first off, we see over here, if we come up, take a look at the dominant male of this here 350 gallon aquarium, my tiger Oscar, and look at his head. All those scars are self-inflicted. This guy is having a tantrum, and in this corner, I added a lot of driftwood because my peacock bats were being aggressive towards the smaller ones. I had the driftwood because it really helps the smaller ones escape. But the Oscar, he's been chasing fish around as well. And he goes full speed and run into a piece of driftwood. And now he has this big old gash in his head. Um, and definitely not a nice look. But um, I'm going to have to treat the tank with metal fix because he's not the only one. Um, a few of them got some tails that's sliced up. The Pierce, I got a sliced up tail. All because... um. These peacock bass, these two, especially this one, are just being insane. Look at his color. A black peacock bass. Normally he's green. He's black to just show his aggression. He's black for camouflage to better hunt these guys, especially the smaller version of himself. Um, so yeah, we have some damages. I'm going to put some Malefix in there to try to heal them up. It's a big thing for this aquarium. I used to feed this tank smelt, which were their small little fish um they no longer are in stock now the person at the store said that this is just temporal i've been going to the store for three years straight and they've always been in stock now they're saying it's seasonal and all my predatorial fish love smell and that's pretty much the only thing that they've been eating so now i'm pretty much lost trying to figure out what to feed them i tried feeding sardines they do like eating sardines but sardines is such an oily fish so much oil comes to the top and then ends up in my sump now the oil really doesn't do too much of a problem when it comes to water quality um, but I just don't like the look of it, the oily surface. I do have a skimmer so once again it does go down into the, into the filter over there but still so much oil from those sardines I definitely don't like it. So the next option is to go ahead and try um, tilapia. Good thing I took out the tilapia before, look at this guy. He's not doing it now but he um, he's not going to follow me but he's a greedy fish but yeah. I'm going to try to feed these guys tilapia now. Try sardines. Tilapia should be less oily. Um, so yeah, let me just give this a try. So I think it's safe to say that this tilapia will do for now. If you look at the surface from beneath, really a little bit of oil. You can see some of the oil, but definitely nowhere near as much as the sardines. Now I still have a lot of sardines left, so I'm still going to continue to feed sardines. But um, this is going to be my primary source of food for this tank until I'm able to um, get my hands on some smelt. And when I do get my hands on some smelt, I'm going to um, really stock hard. And of course you can't forget the parasite, so I'll just go ahead and toss in some 
um, carnivore sticks um, and ask will take care of those now this big guy believe it or not only wants live fish so when I had him in quarantine down here I only fed him feeders because um, he was stressed out so I wanted to make it easy for him that turned out being a bad decision because now he doesn't want um, the raw foods or the dead foods that he used to eat so now he has to readjust and that's the reason why he wasn't um, jumping in yesterday he did eat a bunch of pellets but definitely not as enthusiastic as the rest of these guys next door we have um the red devil over here look at him he's not in his corner um last time he was over there in his corner and now he's not and i think that the main fish to thank because of that are my convicts so these convicts are just um really stirring up this aquarium this male convict in particular where is he i added a few more rocks to make their territory a little bit more secure look at him digging this guy is the toughest fish i've owned now, like I told you guys, I predicted that him and a female was going to conquer my female red devil, and they've done that. Both of them, I have video of them fighting, and eventually the convicts wore out the female. They're smart. They're able to move around um, through these rocks very well. So they conquered the female, and every now and then I even catch them trying to fight this male. And this guy, the male convict is maybe the size of this guy's nukleon. That's how much of a size difference, and yet they're... um still willing to fight so because these guys are so fierce it's causing the female to come out more she's not she's not out right now because the male is just over there but it causes the female to come out a lot more the female coming out a lot more causes the male to come out a lot more so definitely getting more um just movement in this aquarium now unfortunately when the male does come out he wants to fight so he still has to work that out with the female but i'm hoping that maybe he should just lay his eggs back here and maybe that might just trigger him into fatherhood and then I could get some activity. Other than that, we have some mosquito fish schooling up here. Pretty soon I'm gonna put these guys in a pond. They did have babies. Babies got sucked down into the filter. I put them in a different aquarium. Look at this guy. Before he would never come out. Now he's, look at the convict. He missed it. I didn't um, show you guys fast enough, but the convict was flaring now. So yeah, definitely got some life in this aquarium because of these convicts. Other than that, we have my tilapia. This guy is a male, doing awesome. About four inches right now and then we have this guy so when I did that unboxing a few weeks ago this was the secret fish and it's a black belt cichlid so we're gonna see how he turns out hopefully it's a male because the males do get larger and then in his crack you could kind of see the figure of the female Jaguar Dovi she's in here ever since I caught her and um, because when I was trying to catch the male I accidentally caught the female so ever since I caught her she's been a little bit more stressed but um and because she's stressed she's not as open but she's in here and she's definitely not as aggressive as the male speaking of the male jaguar dovi he's in this aquarium and as you can see this tank is empty last time i showed you guys this tank it was full of convict fry and i predicted that they were going to get along because for the first few days he was not eating them however i guess he just got adjusted to the situation adjusted to the scenario and he ate every single one of those convicts now besides him I still have um, two bristlenose plecos that should be safe because they're about his size, one of which is right there. And this guy is over here just pacing up and down. He's a lot more active as an, in this aquarium. He's even starting to get responsive to my hand if I put my fingers in there. Nothing. Nothing, but normally when I put my fingers up there, he comes and um, greets me looking for food. So definitely um, interesting fish. Now, because he was eating convicts, he is a little bit picky when it comes to the food I feed him. So, um, I've been feeding him Hikari floating sticks. He does eat them sometimes, but only when he's hungry. Um, other than that, this guy is hungry for convicts. Now, I do have some bloodworms on hand. I have them soaking. It's been a while since I fed my fish bloodworms. Ever since I got rid of my community fish, um, I haven't really bought any bloodworms. But, I'm going to see if this guy accepts them. So really quickly put some in there
right now he may not be the prettiest fish but he definitely is showing a lot of personality especially for his small size he's only about three inches and i go watch this guy all day because he's always up to stuff definitely a very smart fish and um he definitely shows potential of looking awesome he has the spots like a dove eye he has red eyes um so definitely i can't wait to see what this guy turns into um i didn't feed these fish up here either so i could go ahead and toss in some blood worms and just watch their response as well I think that this might be his first time eating bloodworms, so he's like amazed at the flavor. Um, but yeah, I have I dumped all the bloodworms over here, and these guys want some, and the convict is just non-stop testing his red devil. I wonder if the red look. I can't keep up with the camera, but this convict is moving so fast, and he's definitely making some moves towards this red devil. He's just so small, the red devil really isn't paying him any mind. But yeah, we have just a nice bloodworm feeding, gives some nice protein to these fish. Not to mention they love the flavor. Next we have this aquarium over here. Now with this tank the best thing so far is just the clarity. I cleaned out my FX6 canister filter and definitely enjoying some nice clear water. However the fish are still being shy. Last time I added my three now tilapia to this aquarium just to see if they bring more comfort into the aquarium. And as you can see, you can't even see them, and that's because they're hiding as well. There's a plague in this aquarium, and every fish in this tank is just extremely shy. Now, the only reason why you see these fish out is because these bigger fish are taking up all the hiding spots. My clown loach, this clown loach, right in there is about 12 inches. In there is also a now tilapia, two now tilapia over here, which are all three of them 12 inches and larger. So they're taking up all the hiding spots. And that's the reason why you see all these other fish. You see my um, silver datanoid right there. Um, red spot severum. We have female dovi. And everybody else is forced to stay out. So I still have to find a solution to bring the comfort levels in this aquarium up to make the fish a little bit more confident. Um, one thing I want to do is take these now tilapia and put them in a the backyard pond. You know, every season I go ahead and just um, put tropical fish in a pond. And I think that these tilapia, they need a break. They've been in some pretty rough conditions. Tilapia are not that aggressive, and I've had them with some pretty aggressive fish. So I want to give them a break and put them in a the pond. They not only get the extra space, but I know these guys like the algae. So I'll put these three females in there with my male, who's in that aquarium over there, and see if when I pull them out, I have a bunch of babies, which may end up being feeders. But yeah, some awesome stuff happening in this aquarium. I just need a way to show you guys. So we have um, some awesome fish, as you saw. Red spot serum, such a beauty. Viejas in the spillum, the female dovi has a lot of potential. My um, Mesohera sonatas, my female jaguar, my geophagus over there. Um, even right here, if you look underneath the log, we have a Polypterus and a Cherai bitcher, which is about nine inches. I was almost ready to put him inside the 350. Um, I just don't want the bass trying to eat him because he looks so much like a worm. So a little bit, when he gets a little bit bigger, he may go inside the 350. Um, but yeah, I needed something to bring life into this aquarium to make these fish a little bit more comfortable. Oh man, splashing behind me. That's why the Oscar is hurt now, because he's just non-stop um, harassing fish. Let me try to break this. I'll try to break this up. The best way to break up a fish fight is to just go ahead and toss a net in the tank. That's a small net. Yeah, it's too small. He's still going at it. Come on, stop it. See, I got the camera so I can't do too much, but normally I would just go in there and give him a nice smack. 
not too hard, but enough to just stop them. The Oscar just gets these bad moves, and that's the reason, once again, why he has that big old cut on his head. Because he got in a bad mood, and he's attacking everybody. He wants this big guy because he's the biggest threat. And um, these peacock bass, they really like to panic, so now I have a bunch of water on the floor. But as I was saying, I needed a fish in this aquarium that could just help break the shyness. And you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And so, let's show you guys this aquarium. Uh, I keep running into this pole, but this aquarium. So this is my goldfish aquarium. I had goldfish in this tank temporarily until the pond warms up. I was in the pond today working on a filter and um, it's about 50 degrees, so a little bit warmer and these guys are going out there. So this tank is at 72 degrees Fahrenheit and I want the water to be at least a five degree difference before I put these goldfish out there. But there's no hiding the fact that there is no bino tiger oscar down there. Now I figure there's one fish that you could trust to just always be confident, to always be bold. And that fish is the oscar. So I already have this guy up here being a jerk. But this guy is um, very social, very outgoing, even though right now, once again, he's being a jerk. Um, but Oscars, we know Oscars. Oscars are just known for being so social. Look at this guy. As small as he is, um, fish don't like doing stuff on camera that they do in person. But normally, I'd stick my finger right there. Yep, he's not going to do it. Oh, wait. Yeah, he's right there. Right next to my finger. So, yeah, normally, I stick my finger up there, and he's right at my finger. A very interactive fish. Let me get him some blood ones. That's kind of too much, but um, that's all they're going to get maybe today and tomorrow. But yeah, that is my solution for that 125 behind me, even though pretty soon I'm going to be combining most of those fish into one aquarium, which is going to break the shyness. Still, my temporal solution is to get this guy. Now, he's in here with goldfish, which of course is a no-no, but I didn't really have anywhere else to put him. I would have put him in this tank, but I didn't want him to get ripped in half by this Jaguar Dovi. So I just took the risk and put him in this aquarium. Once again, this tank is at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't too bad for this Oscar. And he's in here until he reaches about maybe four inches, which should be in a month. And then in, in that time period, I'll go ahead and put him in that aquarium. And hopefully the boldness of an Oscar can make this tank alive and make these fish a little bit more comfortable. And then after that month, when he's added to this tank, he maybe has two, three months before I go ahead and put them all into this aquarium. So maybe it was pointless, but it's still cool to have, you know, Bino Tiger Oscar. And now we have one more tank to show, and that is this here 210 gallon aquarium. And first thing you notice is this guy. So this is my Cuban cichlid. Has somebody that wanted to see more of this fish. The best way to do that is to put them in this aquarium where there's just so much activity so much life it causes any fish to be added to become a little bit more comfortable now when i put them in the aquarium first thing i noticed was a change of color which made me think that it was a female um, because normally females show more black while males show more silver now this could be because it actually is a female or it could be because my jaguar in, is in this aquarium i have a male jaguar which is right next to him um, the male jaguar is more dominant and that possibly could cause the Cuban, even if it is a male, to show female coloration. So I'm not sure of the gender. I was thinking it was a male downstairs because it definitely looked like a male showing more silver, but up here it's showing that, that black color. So now it's questionable. Besides that, we have the Geophagus Brasiliensis still showing the most color, the most consistent color out of all my fish. Um, we have the Jack Dempsey's. Not looking too bad. Normally the female, she doesn't look too good, but she's looking okay because the male has been tolerating her. Um, the weeks before he was being aggressive towards her but now he's tolerating her i don't know if they want to breed but so far they both are showing decent colors up here and besides that everybody else just doing good the temple barbs swimming around as normal bala sharks i would have put the bala sharks in the pond because i'm pretty sure with all the algae they would have grew nice and big grazing all day however i imagine catching them and it's definitely something i don't want to do um other than that the, the dominant male of the tank is the jack dempsey which so far he's doing a decent job, but it looks like pretty soon this male jaguar is going to be the dominant fish. He's growing quietly, he's being um, in the shadows, not really making too much of a 
um, bold statement as most Jaguars would make. However, he is the second biggest fish in an aquarium now. And pretty soon he's going to be the biggest because um, this guy is eating like crazy and his full size ends up being larger than the Jack Dempsey. So pretty soon he is going to be dominant. Hopefully his mild demeanor stays mild. Then we have this peacock bass in here. I want this guy to go downstairs because then I can actually work on him eating raw fish. And I just think he still eats feeders and he refuses any other food downstairs with the other peacock bass. No doubt he would um, compete with them. Look at him being aggressive towards these peaceful fish. But yeah, no doubt he would compete with them and it could cause him to eat um, raw foods and even prepared foods. But he's too small. He would definitely be eating if I put him down there. So a little bit longer. Besides that, we have the convicts. Two male convicts, two female convicts doing good. Um, they were pairs, but when I put them in this tank, they separated. And they're doing a lot better being separated because they're able to grow without worrying about breathing or anything. Just did a water change in this tank today, so it is a little bit murky. Other than that, um, we have some plants up here. That the tinfoil barbs uprooted. I had them up here in that piece of driftwood, and they must have taken them out today. We have a polypterus and a gala swimming underneath there. Um, we have an African leaf fish back there in the shadows. You probably can't see them too well. And the silver dollar is doing awesome. But yeah, this tank, um, always awesome to watch. I just got a little bit more blood worms and I'll just toss them in here for these guys. Look at the Mayan sake, like I forgot about him. But that's pretty much a tease for these guys because, as you can see, there's nothing left. Just put the rest of their food in there, their pellets and everything, so they're finishing up. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Just wanted to give you guys some updates. Now, honestly, I wanted to give you guys a look at the pond filter that I'm building. That was the intended video for the week. However, that's taking a little bit longer than expected because I just don't have a lot of time to work on it. So hopefully next week I can give you guys a look at that DIY. And I also have a few more DIYs lined up. I want a little bit more interactive videos, a little bit more hands-on and helpful videos. Um, I like giving you guys updates because there's always changes. But I also want to provide some helpful, useful videos as well. So yeah, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.